but yeah, we're trying to figure out working a job and <laughs> figuring out what your career is going to be in your 20s. Hello. <laughs> Hello, little chickadees. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Gabby. If you're old here, brush your teeth. Anyway, we are doing a little vlog um, and it's kind of, the vibes are navigating my 20s. So I'm actually in Orlando, I'm visiting my parents because tonight there is a networking event for the college I went to, Go Knights. I went to the University of Central Florida in Orlando. Um, and so there's a networking event for that. So I took the train up last night and I am here now. I am still working. Um, it's a Thursday. So we are actually going to take my work laptop. I've been working on morning. We're going to take it to a coffee shop. I'm going to try, I believe it's called Framework Coffee. I've never been, but I really just have been creating like a latte that looks like this. I'll insert it on the screen, but like in a big mug and warm. It has latte art and I just, I've been creating that. So we're gonna go get that. Um, and yeah, this is my outfit. But this is a terrible angle. And I bet the dog's gonna be in the way. Yep. Hi. Hi, Bentley. Um, I'm trying the wrong shoe theory. Hopefully you can even see my shoes in this. So I'm wearing like cute little ballet flats. Um, they're square toe ballet flats from Steve Madden. And then jeans, which I'm gonna watch this back and see if maybe it looks better if I don't cuff them. Um, but I can't tell. And then my normal jewelry that I always wear. And a Guns N' Roses t-shirt. I would wear a necklace, but I forgot to have one, so we're not gonna do that. But, anyway, yeah, so we're doing that. And we're also going to chat. Hopefully my dad will be on the vlog, that'd be fun. Um, and maybe see if he'll give any pointers for like working in your 20s. Um, obviously I came just because it's a networking event. I've never done a networking event before. I've never really put myself out there. Um, and I think in your 20s, it's hard to just, if you didn't already have connections going into it, it's kind of difficult to start them. And while I've made that network um, at my current job and with a few people across Miami, I've still been struggling to just find new opportunities, whether that's in mentorship, mentorship, um, professional development, or even, um, just looking at other opportunities to see if I wanted to change my career just because I'm so young and you know I've, I'm kind of interested in maybe trying a few different things before I settle down into like my lifelong career um and to be completely transparent the cost of living keeps going up and I would like to <laughs> increase my salary um so yeah I just wanted to take this opportunity so I Need to, um, later today, probably during my lunch break, I need to like fix up my resume so that it's ready to go. Um, I brought my business cards. If you don't have business cards, I highly recommend getting some just because it's such an easy way to give people your information and it doesn't have to be anything crazy. You can just print them off at um, like Office Max or Office Depot or whatever, Staples. And it literally just needs to have like your name, um, your email, your phone number, and maybe like your industry on the back or like a little blurb. Um, about the kind of work you're interested in. But yeah, we're trying to figure out working a job and <laughs> figuring out what your career is gonna be in your 20s. So I probably won't film at the event tonight just because I'm gonna be focused on like selling it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, hopefully my dad will be willing to be on the vlog and we can ask him a couple questions because he um, worked for a company for 20 years and then has had two successful businesses since then. So hopefully one, at least one of my parents because they ran their businesses together. So at least hopefully one of my parents will be willing to chat a little bit and maybe give some, give some advice on that. But yeah, I'm excited to take you guys along. Um, but you know, first we gotta get to the day. The event's at night. We still gotta go and do our job all day today. So we're gonna head to Framework and I'll see you guys there.
Um, <laughs> as y'all saw, I went and got coffee. I worked for a little bit. I went to um, one of my favorite spots for lunch. It's called Pokehana. I couldn't decide if I wanted poke or if I wanted like a rice plate, so I got a mix. Um, if you're ever in Orlando, that place is so good. I highly recommend the poke. The shrimp, the garlic shrimp was not like I remembered it. I guess I don't always remember it being fried, but maybe I'm just making that up and it's always been fried and I just didn't remember it right. Um, but it was really, really delicious. A few other places I love in Orlando are Stasio's in the Milk District, Prado in Winter Park, and my parents love going to um, Maggiano's, which is on iDrive. That's an Italian spot. The last three places are all Italian spots. Um, and then Framework Coffee was super delicious. You guys saw I got a cappuccino. It was so good. I also love, um, I love, what is this place called? Foxtail. I don't get any coffee from there just because in my past experiences, I just haven't really enjoyed what I ordered. But I do love their matcha. And I also really like, um, what is this place called? Oh, Black Bean Deli. It's a Cuban um, place. They have one in Winter Park area. And I believe they also have a second location. And I can't remember where it's at. But they have an amazing Cafe con leche. It's so good. And all of their food there is amazing as well. So just a few places if you're ever in Orlando. And then for lunch, another place I forgot. Hawkers. That's like a Thai Asian fusion restaurant. And it is so good. So if you're ever in that area um definitely check those places out but i wanted to show y'all my dad is on the way home from work i'm still working we're just taking a quick little break um and so i was gonna we're gonna try and ask him a few questions when he gets home like on our way to the event but i wanted to show y'all what i'm wearing i'm going to wear this little outfit both of these are from loft this is just um this kind of puffs at the end here and it's closer to a boat neck than a scoop neck. And then these are just straight leg, thick material pants that um, end at my ankle. The one thing I love about Lofts is that they have petite clothing um, and I am petite size. I'm 5'4", but I have a really small to torso. So petite clothing just fits me a lot better. Um, but they have lots of really, really great work wear uh, in addition to just having a really great size range and like measurement range. Um, so if you're ever looking for professional clothing and you don't know where to start, I highly recommend Loft. What was I going to say? There's something else I had to say as well. And I can't remember. Okay, bye. It doesn't sound like you So I'm with my dad and we're on our way to our alumni event. He's also a UCF alum. Go Knights. Um... He doesn't want to be in the book, so we're just going to ask him questions. My first question is, when you were first starting your career, if you could give yourself one piece of advice about just either like looking for a job or like navigating your first job or looking for what you're passionate about for your career, what would you tell yourself? For navigating first job, I'd say you have to sell yourself. And I think there's a lot of people now that just rely on a piece of paper or social media to tell them how good you are, but if you can't sell yourself with the job market nowadays, it's gonna to be tough. And what do you mean when you say sell yourself? You have to prove that what you've done or what you know is better than everybody else because there's 100 resumes and out of those 100, 10 of them are worth phone calls and out of those 10, maybe one of them's worth an interview. And if you're not the one that can make yourself stand out immediately, you'll probably never get a phone call. Yeah, are there any like keywords or something that you would look for on a resume that would help you identify who maybe one of those 10 people would be? For me in the technical field, it's more things that you've created or led or driven with some kind of statistic. Mm -hmm. For example, I, I piloted a program that reduced inventory by 35% or I increased revenue 14% by doing XYZ. Things like that show proof that you not just say, hey, I'm great hire me please yeah and so if you were in a college setting you would put like projects that you worked on with examples right. ways that you um were like a leader in those initiatives or even if you did some sort of school project kind of like the end results to kind of yeah. give yourself some some data yep. to Any, back yourself up anything that you've led and anything that showed a positive result um anything you've done that was multidiscipline, i.e engineering students coupled with business students and this was a result that that's huge because then that shows you can do you can spread your wings outside of what your your education, your formal education has shown, um, which makes 
you're much more well-rounded uh, employee. Yeah, that's really good advice. You have done, I would say, like a wide variety of things. My dad used to work at Disney as a mechanical engineer, and then he worked for FPL as a nuclear engineer, and now he is a business owner. Is that how you would classify yourself? What do you think those, because those are obviously very different fields, what do you think those things have in common that like make you interested in them? Um, how to run groups efficiently. And like I said, any, anything technical, you have to learn how to find the weakness before it finds you and put something in place to not allow that to occur because it's, it costs time, money, and ultimately bottom line. Um, my time at Disney, I learned how to do figure out how things break and make them not break again. Um, time in nuclear is really, time is money. And every time that the plant is not in service, uh, it's big, big dollars for the company to restore. So uh, trying to minimize the downtime with respect to preventative maintenance or just, just finding ways to eliminate waste, that is huge for the bottom line, both as an employee as a, as a business owner as well. Yeah. So would you say some, like if I were to, Put that into one phrase like let's say i'm i'm at an interview and somebody asks like oh what are you interested in specifically if i said i'm really interested in creating efficient processes and like just being process oriented minimizing mistakes i'm really interested in almost like the puzzle of a project and how to make everything work as efficiently and effectively as possible would you say that's a good i think so it really depends on the field but anything technical finding inefficiencies and streamlining is huge because really time is money and that that helps support the bottom line for anything that you're doing. Yeah, and if you use phrases like that, I think it also shows the person interviewing you that you, number one, value their business because you value their time and their money, but number two, that you're also invested in making th the company better, which is ultimately what they're hiring you to do. They're obviously hiring because there's a missing piece in their workforce and they're looking to fill that piece and you showing that you're interested in, in optimizing things and being the person to fill that gap is ultimately what employers are looking for. Would, right. would you agree? And it shows not there. Some employers will hire to fill a gap today, but a lot of employers are looking to hire what could be tomorrow as well. So yeah. they're looking for qualities in the interview that give you a, a narrow glimpse of what you could be, not just what you are now. For sure. And I think one of the best questions to ask um, in an interview, and I'm sure you would agree, is where that company is looking to grow from now because obviously if, if you're going to be at a company for, I don't know, even one or two years at minimum, you are invested in the growth of that because it also means your professional growth. So asking where they see the company in five years, what areas they're looking to grow in, what markets they're looking to expand in, all of those kind of things I think are really, again, just good indicators that you're invested in the success of the company and you're interested in being there to help it grow and, and succeed. I tend to agree. And to what? I tend to agree. Oh, I tend to agree. Good. See, guys? I know what I'm talking about sometimes. Um, so when you were first starting your career, you were obviously young like me in your 20s. What Did you ever have like a time where you were unsure of what you were going to do next, or were you always kind of, this is my next step? Like, Essentially, how did you discern what the next step was going to be? Was it just like the next right decision, or did you kind of always have a path that you were interested in following? No, no real path. I really, once I figured out that I don't have a whole lot left to learn here, I went and found something else. Something that was uh, bigger than I thought I could do at the time, and then you grow into it, and then eventually you grow out of it. But as soon as I get bored, I'm ready to move on, which I think yeah. a lot of the, the people in your generation are probably looking for. Yeah, and I think that's also a testament to like being able to identify what it is about a job that you like, because obviously in my dad's experience, he was in multiple different industries, but that didn't change each of those jobs had that unifying thread. So even though he was in a couple different industries, there was a lot of transferable skills because he he identified what he was liking about those jobs and was able to find that in a different industry. So you don't need to necessarily like pigeonhole yourself into one one area. Yeah, one, one great example is when we bought the, the metal manufacturing company, um, I had to go through, I had to meet with the board of a bank and they said, you have no experience in metal manufacturing. And to put it bluntly, I said, I don't need to. I need to know how to run people who know how to run metal manufacturing companies. And that, that I think, is what allowed them to see that you don't need to learn how to weld to run a welding company. You know how to how to organize well. Yeah, how to manage people. Right. I also think it's important, as somebody who's young, to be confident in your ability. Obviously, there's an extent. You don't want to be overconfident in, in 
egotistical almost, but I think that sometimes we tend to underestimate ourselves, especially as women. Um, there's like a statistic that like a specific percentage of women don't apply to jobs because they don't meet every single criteria. Um, and I think it's important to just not only have confidence in your skills and abilities, but also confidence in yourself. At the end of the day, as much as you are wanting to be a part of a company, that company is still looking for somebody to fill that position. They're looking for you as much as you are looking for them. Okay, if you could give, well, I guess instead of giving your younger self advice, you can give me advice. Is there any any last parting words of wisdom you'd like to leave us all with? Um, I, I think you touched on it. I think be confident, but that also comes with the know what you know, but also know what you don't know. Um, and really, it shows ambition. If you don't know the answer, be the first one to say, I don't know that, but I will find you the answer by tomorrow. Yeah. Um, it shows that you're not willing, you're, you're willing to learn but you also know your limitations and you're not going to put the company out in a bad position. Yeah. And to add to that, I would also say when you do get the job, don't stop learning. So like my dad said, obviously, if you don't know the answer to a question, be the first person to ask. But something that I have found that makes me successful in my role now is that I am constantly looking at trends in the industry that I'm in. I'm constantly looking at what new things are happening, where there's opportunities for all of us to grow. But also, if there's case studies at other... Um, at other organizations that are doing really well, looking at how we can implement that in our organization so that we can succeed as well. And that's something that I've gotten feedback from from my boss that they really appreciate that I'm always looking for opportunity for all of us to grow. But also, at the end of the day, that's only making me better. And if I choose to leave my organization and move somewhere else, I'm taking all of that knowledge and all of um, those ideas with me. So I think that's, I think that's good. But thank you for answering all those questions. Hopefully you guys found some value in that. I know it's very difficult, especially right now in 2024, to be looking for a job and to try to figure out what you're going to do for the next step of your life. And I think it's just important to remember that it's not your whole life. It's just the next step. So best of luck to y'all. And I'll see you guys after our networking event.